Um, it is seven. It is seven o'clock, and Tuesday we'll call the meeting to order for Tuesday, January tenth, twenty twenty-three. Our first meeting of uh, the new year. In the spirit of reconciliation, the township of Nipigon respectfully acknowledges it is located on the traditional island lands of the Red Rock Indian Band, signatory to the Robinson Superior Treaty of 1850, and also the historic presence of the Métis. All right, so um, are there any disclosures of pecuniary interest? I do have one which I submitted um, to the CAO, and um, my uh, uh, I'll be stepping out under Recreation 5A, significant else request. Okay, so we'll move on to number two in the agenda minutes, uh, approval of uh, previous minutes for December 20th, 2022. Um, resolution number, please, Kelly. 042023. Res resolution number 042023, moved by Councillor Sakamoto, seconded by Councillor Zechner that the minutes of the meeting of council of December 20th, 2022 are hereby adopted as recorded by the deputy clerk. Any discussion? All in favor? And carried. Do we have the, um, that's not an echo of us, eh? Do we have the, anyone who's online muted? Go to uh, with the family. Yeah. Yeah, he has to mute it through the Zoom. Okay. Um, number two B, um, approval of special meeting, uh, special meeting minutes of January 9th, 2023, resolution 05 2023, moved by Councillor McKenzie, seconded by Councillor Sakamoto that the minutes of the special meeting of Council of January 9th, 2023 are hereby adopted as recorded by the clerk. Any discussion? All in favor? And carry it up. Okay, uh, item number three, finance. Confirm and approve accounts. Resolution 6, 2023. Moved by Councillor McKenzie, seconded by Councillor Sakamoto, that the payment of accounts is listed on the following payment voucher B and the same is hereby confirmed and approved. Payment voucher number one, 2023, in the amount of $47,727.92. And payment voucher number two, 2023, in the amount of $301, uh, $301,309.09. $301, All in favor? and carried. Okay, uh, B, Minister of Fi Ministry of Finance 2023 taxation year. Okay, I'm just gonna get one. So this is, um, this is a letter from the Ministry of Finance discussing um, various highlights or, or low lights of the 2023 uh, property, uh, sorry, tax rates. Is there anything that uh, you want to point out here, Kelly, in particular? I provided in the memo that small business property subclassing is offered for reduction. This has been something ongoing for a few years. The, the problem or some of the things you can find with it is that if you do reduce uh, small business property subclasses, you have to make it up with other property subclasses, which usually would result in residential tax raises. Um, but again, with inflation, as you can see, if anybody's been watching the news with other municipalities, there's pretty large tax increases on the table to deal with the 78% inflation rate right now. Okay, any, any questions about so we'll be discussing this in the finance meeting then. If you wish for it to be on the finance committee, but we will propose where they... we'll propose tax rates at the, the finance meeting to show how to make up for the inflation. Okay. And that so that'll be I'll break down all portions of how a tax rates calculated with the special levies, um, with the education rates applied, with the base rate applied, 
and then show you what we have to basically make in taxes just to pay for our yearly operations based on inflation. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Um, what, do, what do they define as a small business for, for that um, subclass? Do you know? Okay, not, not a big deal. I was just curious about that. Um, was there, when is the last time that the, that the taxes have been raised for the, for the small businesses? The they taxes were raised business. last year for the small businesses. Okay, at what rate? 0 0.8, 0 0.9 percent. Okay. The taxes are raised every year. We okay. don't ever reduce taxes. The tax rate is always raised, but because of the levy, the way the assessments work, if there's a huge levy increase, if you apply the current year taxes to it, you know, so you have a levy, let's make it simple. You have a levy of a million dollars and you apply a, a one tax rate to it. If the next year, if it goes up to 1.5 million and you want to make an increase, you don't necessarily have to raise the tax rate because the assessment's caught up. We're getting into this debt in depth in finance. So it's there's many factors that, that are involved with taxes. So there may be a perception that taxes are dropped, but they're not necessarily dropped. The assessment plays a big role for them back on that type of stuff. So I, I did read in there that um, they they um, suggest consulting with the small businesses on that on that um, subclass. So has it, there been any discussion with the small businesses as yet? If they is it? Are, is I it, haven't been directed to meet with the small businesses prior councils that were um, had the option of doing this. Never directed at all to to meet with the small business classes. For a reduction. So, if council wishes, we'll have staff meet with them to discuss this option and, and see how we feel about it. And, you know, then we'd have to do the work to show how we make up for any type of reduction on a certain class, which would have to be made up with a different class. Right. That's what I'm thinking too, because the, the folks that own the small businesses here also own houses here. So, if they're, if they're their taxes are going to go down with the small business and their taxes go up with the with their um um private property, then it might not. I'm not sure how that would I just recommend we push that over to finance. Sure. Yeah. We can... Okay. So right. we'll uh we'll have discussions um at our finance meeting for that. Cool. Okay. Next item is MPAC, the 2022 municipal partnerships report. Any highlights on that? Any discussion that anyone has? There's never highlights. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> highlights, low lights. <laughs> yeah, it's basically just information newsletter again. Uh, 2022 year transfers is item 3D. So we have a resolution here, 7 uh, 2023. Moved by Councillor Zechner and seconded by uh, Councillor Pelchi, that this council hereby approves the following reserve fund transfers to the 2022 year end internal debt repayment from general fund to reserve fund, solar NCC 8700, curling plug 6700, NCC boilers Olympia 10,000, water treatment plant 60,000, snow plow 12,000, Churchill Street 20,000, waterfront 20,000. Ford F650, 12,000. Four Street Curb, 10,000. Fire Truck, 20,000. McCurdy, 10,000. Total, $189,400. Budgeted transfers to reserve funds. Fire Department, Auto X, 5,000. OPG, 21,000. Library, $547.46. Um, cemetery Niches, Niches, I'm not sure how you say that. Um, $1,000 for a total of $27,547.46. Total transfers from general to reserve account, $216,400. And that's uh, the totals, um, which is $189,400 plus $27,547.46 uh, minus $547.46. Um, from lib to res funds, $547.46. Cap res to gen, emo gas tax, $223,506.44. OCIF formula funds, 
$229,138. I refer to a total of $452,644.44. Any discussion? <laughs> Questions? Uh, I understand the first part that Kelly described in, in memo. Um, I just wanted to confirm <laughs> so that the next part of the fire department library and cemetery niches, that is another, that's money that's going to be paid back to the reserve fund, a separate batch. And then I just wanted to understand what the last two items were, the 450000 So your first question, that was a budget amount that I put your budget each year that go into reserve funds to pay for capital expenses. So to make it straightforward, for the fire department, the auto X 5000 and the OPG 21000 we signed the OPG agreement for the fire protection. That right. money's budgeted to go back directly to the fire department reserve funds. The 5000 right. auto X, there's a formula in place that when uh, maybe the fire department response to auto X calls the distribution of the funds go to capital, go to cost recovery, and then go towards the fire department expenses. Um, that money there is then set in a reserve fund because we do have uh, a plan in place for a replacement of fleet. None of the fleet is, is financed, so we try to reduce the costs as much as we can through putting stuff into reserve and planning ahead to the purchase yeah. type of thing. The, the bottom one from library to reserve fund, that's library money. So we take it out. The library <laughs> money into reserve fund. I was speaking with the library tonight to purchase some capital expenses. We'd rather finance it through the reserve fund than through an operating because it again takes away from their yearly uh monies if we, we got to go and buy a, a piece of equipment or something. Um the capital reserve to general fund, AMO gas tax. That was our yearly subsidy from AMO gas tax. We're granted AMO gas tax for capital projects each year. We transfer that from the reserve to the general fund because that's where we pay the expense out of and we're repaying the general fund. Okay. Okay. So the, all those things you see at the above there, the solar, the NCC, that's all internal debt. The township of Nipping carries no external debt. Debt, we fund all of our own projects. Yeah, that's, that's nice. That's good you can do that. Yeah. And that's set up for, for years. And the last one, the OCIF formula funds. Yeah, so that's uh, that's a yearly fund that they give towards that has to be for pre-approved projects. So we use the last amount on finishing the McCurdy stormwater management project. Okay. Yeah, and that you'll see that coming in the capital budget. It will fund the, the next okay. capital, and it only falls for certain uh, projects. So that stands for capital reserve to general fund. Yep, to general funds. Oh. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? And carried. Okay. Um, public works uh, item 4A um, is snow plowing at the marina. Okay, so um, I was interested in, in having this on the agenda because of uh, so many um, years of <laughs> People asking about having it plowed past the um, past the what we call the Texas Bridge, I guess, um, so that people can drive down and have their coffee, and lots of people like to walk down and and enjoy the uh, the far end of the marina. Um, so, any any discussion, Kathy? Mm -hmm. um, and this is just a, a little beef process beef with me, unless I totally forgot before Christmas. Maybe we. This, this came to town council, but I don't remember it. Um, Pierre and I were at Economic Development Committee before Christmas, and this was proposed to us um, with the thought that there were concerns of salt with crossing the Clearwater Creek Bridge, and that's why it wasn't plowed. So we, and that tourists like to, be, the best spot to take pictures of the bridge is from the, the end of that road. Mm -hmm. um, so we agreed that without salt, being used that um, that we would support that economic development. That was a proposal that should come to town council to be approved. Um, did that that didn't come to us. Um, and next thing you know, somebody's down there following it. Unless I forgot, maybe we did in December and I've forgotten to be, but I don't recall it going through that process. So it was approved at EDC, but that was supposed to come to us. Then as town council, which was 
I, well, I can answer that. It was just local people that did it themselves. They went and plowed themselves just because they go down there. And there's a, a group of three of them did it. And it was with other people that helped figure it. It was just a uh, totally volunteer effort by them. I'm just, hmm. people should be reminded that they should ask permission before they do stuff on time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, just thinking about it. If, if, um, the fridge had been damaged or something like that with yeah an accident or something yeah 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 although it was appreciated I think that it like you said maybe that's permission would be a good idea um yes yeah just uh, I remember uh, in previous councils the uh, the concern was was the cost of doing that additional plowing and uh, at that time um, at, at that time it was indicated that uh, for over the course of the year was the uh, uh, Jeff had estimated the cost at over five thousand dollars. So at that at that particular time, uh, given that information, um, the, the council at the time said that they they weren't in favor of going all the way down to the free end, but they were just uh, willing at that time to go to the turnaround rate mm -hmm. for the double boat launches. But if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, somebody just came back this year with a, a cost that wasn't even near as high as five thousand dollars. And it was a matter of what, uh, I think it was only like 10 or 15 minutes it would take the grader to go do that loop. So, and then a concern also came up as in regards to, they'd have to drop the wing for the trail so that you wouldn't have a big bank over with the trail for walking. But that was the only concern I had. And like, like there's been numerous amount of people have asked about that spot. And I go down there myself pretty old, almost daily. So you see all the cars parked down there. So uh, I don't think a cost of even I don't the way it was related to me it wasn't even near five thousand. So I'd have no problem if, if if it was in a time like you couldn't expect that to be open first. Yeah. But if they had time that it could be open, yeah. well, that's just my opinion. Well, I, I think we forward to public works and we can make a recommendation to council on that. Please, I don't think that's what this is. We can't bring that forth. Mm -hmm. This one time, right? Mm -hmm. Why not? Correct. Oh, the only issue is we don't currently have a public work superintendent. Yeah, so the no, next meeting that's be why scheduled for February. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So again, Mayor Kuko requested to be on the agenda. I don't, I'll take direction from council on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I could not. Uh, yeah. So the memo is that the area is not a priority during um, accumulated snowfalls, but um, it, it looks like that it could be possibly. Mm -hmm. um, Take it, that, and that's what I'm thinking too. Is that if we if we don't do it, if we wait until February to decide yeah, to right. do that, then it's just going to accumulate all that snow and make it harder and yeah. harder for it to if we can keep on it. So, um, I guess I'd like to just recommend that we that we go ahead with um, you know directing Public Works if we could to to keep that plowed as it is plowed now, keep it plowed, um, and but just not have it be the priority. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, I guess, with the public works trucks, I guess it would only be the probably the half done. I don't know if any the other yeah, they do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm just yeah. We did some good twelve feet wide. I mean, so. I brought I'd save this gourd. I brought this up numerous times yeah. this past year, and then it was. I mean, it was because it wasn't cost effective. That was the reason yeah. for it. But I do understand. Yeah. I find that in the high for me too. Yeah. No, and I understand too. Uh, you know, I understand where that's coming from. I guess what I would suggest is that uh, because we don't have a public, public works uh, superintendent now that we get our foreman to go down and, and investigate just to see if it's possible and then let uh, let him come up with a recommendation whether you know he, he feels that it's uh, within it's reasonable to do. Yep, and it, it looks like Kelly did um, speak with the public works department and they said that it was possible. So, okay. Okay. Yep, right. okay. I think a lot of people will be happy about that and appreciate mm -hmm. it for sure. Lots of seniors. Okay. So do you need a uh, CEO? Do you so need a resolution? No. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um. Okay. So now we have uh, the item number four B trail maintenance, significant river uh, trail maintenance. Okay. So. The township does not maintain the Nipigon River Recreation Trail. Public Works Department does not have the equipment to pack or maintain. Oh, this is about the, the packing. This, do you yeah. want to talk a little bit about what 
Yeah, what I you brought just, up. Um, I know that there was a volunteer that was passing the, the Clearwater Trail and the, the Marina Trail. And I hadn't noticed that it had been done before Christmas. And I hadn't seen the gentleman that, that I know that was doing it. Um, so I was, I know that it's well used by a lot of citizens, um, seniors, as well as young parents with their, their kids on sleighs and stuff. So I was, I was going to approach the town about it, but I see that it's been done now. So for short term, yeah, it, it's great. I'm still looking for the gentleman um, that, that does it just to talk to him as, as chair of the trails committee. But, um, and, and in future, we'll, we'll discuss it at the trails committee. Okay. So it's passed on to the town. Yeah, go ahead. I, uh, I spoke with him. And all well, he's, the groomer's down, is now down there and he's, it's, he had to weld it. So he'll be keeping up with it from here on in oh, for the remainder great. of the year. Okay. But if, let him know that, um, yeah, I just wanted to talk to him about, I yeah, haven't sure. noticed I that. That his name has been in any of the volunteer recognition, and I'm sure that's a lot of time for him every year. Yeah, I like that the he press know. Uh -huh. <laughs> the press Doug note. mentions his name, okay. and he's been grooming it for the. Oh, that's great. Yeah, he as a volunteer. As a volunteer. Yeah, as a volunteer, and that's yeah. awesome. And I. Yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. any further discussion of that will be passed on to the trails committee for yeah. sustainability purposes. Okay. And we thank it for you. Yes, thank yes, you. And Doug mentions for doing that. Wonderful. I'm going to get you quite a bit. Um, public Works item 4C. So this is the advertising boards are commonly known as sandwich boards at the Railway Street and 5th Street um, intersection, which is also known as our, what is it, policeman dummy? <laughs> dummy, <laughs> dummy, 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 dummy. dummy. <laughs> Something or other? Uh, that's how pe people recognize it. Um, so this is uh, an item that I brought forward. Um, I know it's a, it seems like a small a small thing, but I feel like uh, there's a lot of small things that need to be done in town. And if we just forget about them because they're small, then nothing, <laughs> none of the small yeah. things get done. So um, I'm kind of looking to uh, do uh, bring something small forward every at least once a month or every every meeting. So this particular one is um, just maybe looking at having some kind of a policy with, with those sandwich boards. There's six out there right now. Two of them are covered with snow that have been covered with snow for weeks now. <laughs> um, some of them have been there for, I would say over three years. Um, some of them are just, are, are sort of left to rot and not maintained. Um, there are some that are removed when they're not needed anymore and updated. Um, I noticed uh, one had the garbage bay taken off of it and has some new signs. I'm just looking for ideas on how we can sort of um, maintain that a little bit because it, it's 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 looking. Um, it gets out of hand. It, it does get out of hand. I yeah. see there's personal business advertising in there too. And yeah. yeah. Just I think it started going? out yeah. with just events, special mm -hmm. things, which is great, right? So can we have a is there a discussion that you guys want to have on that or anyone have a comment? Again, this might we might want to put that back to public works, but uh, I know even personally, like um, I I have put boards up there and I hate doing it. <laughs> and uh, and I'll tell you why because I don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's a lot of traffic going along there and uh, you never know when a big truck's going by or a car or somebody's gonna slip or whatever. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I do agree we should come up with some kind of a a policy for a recommendation. Um, maybe give us some time to think about it yeah. on the agenda for the next public works meeting. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's not a rush. Some of them have been there for three years. Forever, I think it's yeah. done another yeah. one. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it, it is great for ever. I, I, I'm just noticing now that you just drive past them now without even looking at them. So is, and this is just my ignorance. Is that this public work that it seems so administrative? You're yeah. talking about a policy. Or were you thinking that people would? have to come into the town office and maybe list their name and get approval to put something up there. Maybe, I'm not sure. Some kind of control, some kind of direction. Yeah. I mean, I don't feel you put a business advertising there and leave it there for three years. There's been one sitting there, it's nice, but it's, it's not really my yeah. idea of the uh, going boards yeah. at the police. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> for instance, at Zechner's, when you have to put something up, you have to put a date on it. So that they know how long it's been there, so they can take it off, right? That's that's how it works. So something similar to that, but not putting yeah. a date on it. Maybe just 
sending Deb an email or something saying, oh, and that's a limit is two months or, yeah. Or for instance, if there's a like continuing like the junior B games is up there all winter and they take it away after they, they do the job with that. But, um, you know, I would like to leave it here from this yeah. to this. And just so we know how long it's supposed to be so that if it's this <laughs> long, maybe they get an email. Okay. It's, it's got to be taken down. Then. Yeah. So this fits under public works? I, I, I think so. Okay. Okay, so we'll send it to Public Works for further discussion in February. Okay. And the next item is uh, number five, Recreation A, Nipigon Elks Request. So I'm going to declare pecuniary interest and leave the room for this one. So just signal me when it's entered. Okay, so I guess um, I'm acting mayor. Acting mayor. <laughs> I don't know. There you go. Here we go. Council McKenzie, you're acting mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, we have a, a, a letter here from uh, Landon Clearwater. It's with the, from the uh, Ipagon Elks. And uh, we do have a mover and seconder on a resolution here. But I think what I'll do is I'll just read the letter so that everyone's clear. Um, it's addressed to the Township of Nipigon. It says, please accept this letter as a formal request to hold the Deer Gardens at the annual Nipigon Adult uh, NBC Hockey Tournament in the same area of the lobby as prior tournaments. <clears throat> We're requesting that it deemed reasonable by town council that we get the lobby rental for a slightly reduced rate of $150 a day. Along with the beer gardens, we would possess a liquor license and insurance for the event. Prior to operating the tournament, we will give uh, hard copies of the SOP and insurance policy to the recreation director. The hockey tournament itself is a fundraiser for Nipigon Elks Hockey and runs from Friday, January the 20th to uh, Sunday, January the 22nd. The beer gardens would be licensed from Friday at 6.30 p.m. until 2, 2 a.m. and Saturday from 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. We acknowledge that any additional costs for operating the hockey tournament and beer gardens will be covered by the Elks. And for, in, for further information or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact my staff and go by Landon. And I have a phone number and email um, address. And uh, concludes by saying we look forward to hearing, hearing back from you. So I'll just read the resolution. We have a mover um, by Councillor Zekter, a sec, a seconded by Councillor Sakamoto. Uh, but this council hereby approves Nipigon Elks hockey request to use the Nipigon Community Center lobby from January 20th, 2023 to January 22nd, 2023 to host the beer gardens at a rate of $150 a day. So I open the floor up for discussion. Any any discussion, John? I think that uh, they run this multiple years doing the exact same thing. It's going to go well. We've never had any issues, so I have no problem with it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it really helps with subsidizing kids' hockey and everything. So I don't know if I'm going to use it. Okay. Uh, so, therefore, we have a mover and a seconder. I call the question all in favor. Carrie. Thank you. The bank can come back in. Yep. Yeah. Come up. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next item on the agenda, uh, 5B is Single Track Society um, Snowshoe Festival. Let's catch up here. This is uh, looks like a poster for um, Snowshoe Festival. Uh, March 5th, 
at 11 a.m. Um, out to, uh, on Cameron Falls Road, which is Highway 585. Okay, that's just informational purposes. And look out for posters and such in the community soon. Yes. Um, there was a note from our CAO oh. just underneath there. Not on that. One. Oh, okay. this oh, is the, yeah. Right that's one. the uh, that's the next item so, there. Yeah. Apologize. Okay. Um. So and the next item, uh, five C, mm -hmm. is single track society again. And uh, it's for the second annual dodgeball tournament. So uh, it's recommended that this uh, this proposal be forwarded to the recreation committee to discuss at their next meeting. And since this is uh, the date for it is um, further on, I believe it's in March, May. Yeah, May. So there's plenty of time to move that on to the next meeting. It doesn't seem to be too time sensitive. So we'll go ahead and move that to recreation. That was very well attended last year. Mm -hmm. It went off very well. Yeah, it's great event. Yeah. Um, item number six, economic development. Uh, 6A Edge Arts Committee minutes of December the 14th, 2022. Yes, I just have a little thing on, on Kelly's point, because this was when I joined the Edge Arts Committee, I thought it was economic development, and then I was told that it was recreation. And so I've assumed it was recreation all along, and all of a sudden, the last couple of months, I see economic development. I'm not sure who said it was recreation, but it's always been economic development. Okay. Yeah, it's always been a self contained economic development. I think the, the confusion might be because the cultural manager attends the meetings, yeah, and they do that. But yeah, it's always been a subcommittee of economic development. Okay. So then this would have to go to economic development usually before it comes to us. But okay. Sometimes that, that can take a long time. But so this is good. Uh, Councillor yeah. McKenzie, do you have some comments? Yeah, I just. Uh... I was looking uh, through the report from the Edge Arts Center, and I, should, I see that the usage uh, for, for November of last year, they had 17 separate uh, times that it was used, and then December was a little bit truncated, but they, they had seven times that, that it was used again. And so it, it appears that it's being well used. Um, I know it's going to go to, uh, to another committee, the Economic Development Committee, and I'm just going to, uh, you know, I would, I'd, I'd like to see. Um, that committee uh, maybe have a look at a possible student for the edge arts for the summer mm -hmm. at least to consider it um last last summer the uh, unfortunately that facility was uh, was closed and uh, we had a lot of uh, well I, I i encountered a number of uh, tourists in that that wanted to have a look in the building and were interested in anyhow i you know i'll leave that for the recreation or the sorry economic development committee to to go through but I just wanted to, you know, to make make that point. Right. On that, I I believe the uh, deadline for application for the summer uh, program is January twelfth. Yes. So that's oh. in two days. So they would have to uh, get that application going ASAP. Any uh, other comments? It is in progress. It is. Oh, it is. That's okay. great. That's fantastic. Thanks for the update, Linda. Yeah. Okay. Um, strategic plan, uh, item 6B, strategic plan for the Township of Nipigon. Okay. So this is, uh, this is a very big, uh, project that we're hoping to get going, um, sooner rather than later. Um, so we, I think what we need to discuss really is the scope of the project. Do we want to have something a little more simple and sort of look at doing it in house, or do we want to have something a little bit like much larger, more expensive, but and getting funding for it? Um, the trade-off is it's it, it's a long wait to get that funding in. It's a long wait. It's a couple of months to get the phase one through, and then months and months after that to get the um, the phase two approved. So, do we have any discussion on what we'd like to do? Um, yeah, I did take the time to, to look at some other town plans. Mm -hmm. I 
I think a strategic plan for the four years that we are here would would make sense. Um, I don't think that it has to be big and fancy. I think it has to address the 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 things that we plan to get done during our four year term. <clears throat> address the priorities. Yeah, so I think shorter and sooner is better than longer and later. Especially if it runs beyond our term of office. Yeah, because yeah. we have no control. Yeah. Uh, yes. I do, I do believe strategic plans usually are typically around 10 years, are they not? It, they it, it, it does depend. I, mean, I think because of the, the reason for that being is that it, we have a four year one, you're going to find in your four, or four year term here that it, it's it's we're going to be, gonna be, we're gonna be working on things from the past. We're working on things yeah. right now from the past. Oh, absolutely. Right? And, and, and it just seems to roll like that. Mm -hmm. I, if we can catch up, I'm, I'm all for that. No, I think it's great. That, those things will be part of the plan. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I see where you're, I see where you're coming from. Sure. And, yeah. Thank you. I, I just, uh, I was part of a strategic plan in the past and you know, uh, by and large, it got shelved and, and forgotten about. And I, I just hate to uh, see that happen again. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't know. My 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 vision of a strategic plan is, you know, uh, to concentrate on maybe a couple of items. You know, not have multi things that we're we're looking towards. Uh, you know, something that we you know, like to say you can maybe do it in you know three or four days, or it can be carried over. But you know, something that that is that is very pragmatic, pragmatic, and uh, that we can we can concentrate on and, and really all agree to, right? See, the ones I've been involved with before is we come up with the ideas, but we still have to get the people to come on board and stuff. We don't pick two items and say, maybe everybody out there, 1,500 people say, that's not what we want. So I don't know if you have time to do that. Like we used to do that. But, but that's just one way. And I think we'd have to pinpoint, like, or sit down and do a couple of main things is that I'm 20 yeah. that you know you're not going to get done. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. well, I, and I believe in relation to what the, I think you're meant the public want, um, Marathon did a um, survey monkey survey of the public. Um, it's going on right now. Open house. It's going on right now. I think they're yeah, surveying to get some to get some public input as well as the things that that perhaps you campaigned on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, like those my don't take a long time. Right. Yes. That so the take. so what we're looking at is shorter and sooner or longer and later, right? But I think both of them would definitely have to require public consultation, absolutely yeah. online and in person as well. Yeah. Um, or by paper, the three that triumvirate. Um so what we're looking at is shorter and sooner or longer and later. And I feel like we should we should probably make that if we could make that decision tonight so we can move forward with either or. The, sh the shorter and sooner we, we would not need um, funding for. It. Mm -hmm. it could be done in-house. And... Um, I, I kind of agree with making the decision. I'm just, when is our, our next, when is the finance meeting? Do you have a date set date? I'm planning the last week of January. That, I mean, because it is a new council, then we can see, I mean, for the ones that haven't right. been here before, see what's available for that, for the shorter, shorter and sooner, what kind of funds are available in house that we can, we can move forward with. And then uh, we've got to have a plan in the uh, future for grants, of course, right? Mm -hmm. With what we want to go there. I think, I think finance would be the best place to make that decision on what we want to do. I, that's my opinion. So. On the shorter and, yeah. or, and or the long. Okay. We're Fair trying enough. to give us a, somewhat of a presentation on the, the funding end of the Okay. And that will be the January 24th meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, is, there, is there a date for it? Finance yeah, meeting? I think that's what no. no, I'm hoping oh. the last oh. week of, of January. I'm just oh, okay. really busy yeah. right now with interviewing. No, yeah, he hasn't had there's nothing to do yet, just the last week of January. Yeah, so I don't want to give you a date because right now there's some new parks going on, but I have provided you extensive information on strategic plans. And if I I may um provide the information to use right now that I have spoken to multiple companies that provide strategic plans, where two or three of them have provided me timelines, and depending on what you think is a long period of time, a full strategic plan can be finished quite quickly. And 
there is, I've spoken to funders, I've got an application in place, just a lot of the funders year end, it isn't December 31st, it's March 31st. Mm -hmm. So that might seem like, well, there's three months, a lot of their money's already spoken to. So again, like I said, I've engaged, I'm, I'm prepared for the phase one application to go in, um, but it's up to council how you want to do this. When, when we talk about funding it internally, I mean, not I, funding, sorry, not funding it internally, uh, doing it internally. That's there's just a difference there, yeah. Just to clarify, um, sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm done. Perfect. Yeah, so the, yeah, I just wanted to clarify that not paying for it internally, but completing it internally, meaning, you know, we make up the questions with staff and with, with council to ask people, and staff holds the public consultation sessions and takes all the notes. We look at all the information and direct administration what to include in that strategic plan. Um, so it's without all the bells and whistles and the community profile and all that kind of yeah. thing, but it, it does set a set a roadmap. So there's that. And yeah, creating a strategic plan probably takes about two to three months, but waiting for the funding can take a year. That's where the that's where the timing is. Yeah. Is uh and then as Kelly said, if if the they're not going to be able to prove anything till past at least past March. Then we're marching into our next year. <laughs> so, anyways, well, let's let's move that forward into finance um, until after we we have our finance meeting and uh, and just you know think about it and see if you have any more thoughts about it. Write them down and we'll discuss that at finance. Well, we do eventually do this. So it'll have to be just strictly strategic plan meetings, eh? Not just under a council meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, just because you get too much going through and yeah, you know, itemize it just one one thing and be a lot easier. Right. So if there were public consultation meetings, we would be yeah. in attending those and and working at our yeah priority, listening <clears throat> and listening to people's uh, concerns and priorities as well. Okay, great. Um, number seven, museum notes of December twelfth, twenty twenty two. Any discussion on uh, the museum notes of December 12th? Councillor McKenzie. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, I attended my, <laughs> my, my first museum meeting. Uh, it was quite interesting. And, uh, you know, I'm interested in that, in that topic. And I know I brought up uh, the possibility of uh, including someone from uh, Parks Canada on the, on the committee. And um, I was asked to uh, approach them. And I have, I talked to the manager. And uh, she seemed interested. And uh, she explained to me that they do have a, what they call a um, a cultural representative, so someone that deals with culture. And I thought that might be a really good fit for a museum. And um, you know, because we have a lot of indigenous culture here, we have a lot a lot of other different cultures. But you know, this person that's their focus at Park at the Parks Canada. So uh, she didn't give me a yes or no, but I did uh, I did ask her about it. Thank you. I, you know, I don't, I didn't think anyone on council would have an, an issue with that, but they do. Just let me know. Any, other, any other questions or discussion? Um, I noticed F um, under New Horizons for Seniors program, significant narrations, their voice and history uh, needs council approved 2K for this project based on the June 20th, 2022 recommendations and confirmed in late September. Can you clarify? What page are you on there? This is part page two at the bottom. I'm just cur curious what and confirmed in late September means. So was the funding confirmed? The $2,000 for from council at the time or? Oh boy, they're really, yeah. really. <laughs> I'm bringing you to, back. I'm, I'm really trying to recall that. Um, Maybe that's something Kelly could clarify. Yeah, that's what they're, they're, they're saying is that that council approved 2000 for this project, which was based on their Jan, June 20th recommendation and was confirmed that they did receive the money in September. Oh, okay. okay. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I was confused by that. Um, I had one more note here. No, that was it. Oh, um, there was a, a, a item here about the um, parts to repair the rod display. And um, I don't think Kristen's here tonight, but was there a, was there any update on that? No. Okay. 
Um, and then I just noticed that uh, 2023 is the 50th anniversary of the museum, which is exciting. <laughs> That's okay. That's right. You're green. <laughs> this is your first meeting, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Fantastic. Uh, Nipigon Historical Museum Curators Report for December 12th meeting. So, um, Ms. Brill uh, submitted a report. Does anyone have any discussion on her report? Any questions, comments? Okay. Thank you to Betty for that. Uh, number eight, sundries, significant public library board members. So this is just an email um, from Sumi, just um, letting us know about the, the uh, sitting board members of the library, just for informational purposes, I believe. Yes. Uh, perhaps you can read them off. So oh, there's, sure. There's a resolution. Oh, there is. Oh, okay. Uh, resolution number nine, 2023, moved by Councillor Sakamoto, seconded by uh, Councillor Zeckner, that the notes of the Nipigon Museum Committee of December 12, 2022 are hereby adopted. All in favor? And carried. Sorry about that. Um, and then we have resolution number 10, 2023. Moved by Councillor Sakamoto, seconded by Councillor Zegner, that this council hereby approves appointing the following members to the Nipigon Public Library Board. Cheryl Broughton, Rosemary Ray, Melissa Robinson, Kelly Mangoff, Richard Patterson, and Maria De Lorenzi. Okay, all in favor? And passed. There we go. Uh, yes, Your Worship, just as an aside, I sit as the council rep from on the library. Okay, right. Thank you for doing that. Okay. Um, eight under sundries eight B third party exit interviews. Um, so this is uh something that um we're looking at. Um putting together a policy on. So does anyone have any uh, comments about that? Questions, comments? I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the development of the policy um, is just to make sure that the any exit interviews that are completed with employees that, uh, that leave um, are consistently um, carried out and using best practices. So um, those exit interviews are really important to glean information um, about how to improve what what have you I and mean, benefits, pay whatever uh, whatever the issues are, um, if any at all. Um, sometimes it can just be I'm moving back home, right? <laughs> They're not from here or whatever. So, um, but yeah, having a policy um, just ensures that everyone who leaves has a has a opportunity to to give an exit interview if they wish, and that the questions are consistent, and that the reporting is consistent as well. Um, so, on that note, okay. so on that note, um, I, I'd like to direct um, administration to move forward with um, uh, putting together a policy for third party exit interviews with questions, consistent questions, and um, a policy that is that can be um, cool. sorry. Sorry, sorry. Okay. I'm trying to interrupt you. No, okay. <laughs> yes. So administration is directed to put together a third party oh, exit interview. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, yeah. Thank please. you. <laughs> oh. That's what it is. Right. Okay, so this one might be 12. All in favor? And carried. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's sorry. That this council directs the CEO to develop a policy regarding exit interviews without uh, without outgoing employees. Okay. All in favor? And carried. Sorry. I thought you were reading without employees. I know. That's what it. That's what I read. Without employees. Presence. That wouldn't be good. 
No point to that. Um, 2023 Good Roads, Ontario Good Roads Conference. So that is um, information on the, the conference. I'm just trying to write it down here. Okay. Any questions on that? I think that's one that's in July. Um, July. Is that one in July? Right? Good Roads? Yeah. yeah. Pardon? April, April. April. Oh, that's April, the April. Yeah, one. Okay. yeah it's April, April 19th. Okay. So, who's interested in going to Good Roads? Who would be interested in okay. Good Roads? Councillor McKenzie? I just got to check if I'm on a time that week. But I, I would if I'm not for sure. Okay, possibly Councillor Pelche. And uh, I would be interested in going as well. I've heard that's a good one too. So, yeah, I heard that's I'm going to pass this year. Because there seem to be so many other things coming up. Okay. But if I can get something related to trails, I would be more interested in that in roads. It would be more meaningful to bring what I'm doing here. Okay. Sounds good. Maybe next year. Okay. Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing okay. Correspondence. Let's see, please. There we go. Um, so this is just an update uh, for council on um, various initiatives that they're the the more well, the more homes built faster act. So just more information on that. Any comments? We're getting more clarity on that. Yes. <laughs> you can send us lots of information on it now. Okay. Why before that we have a bylaw? I can send them. I know prior to the yeah. meeting. Okay. Uh, that was that was a mistake in there. I, I oh, know okay. for that too that I okay. didn't understand. Thank you. Just a page snuck in there that wasn't supposed. There's to. an email sent earlier today. Okay. Okay. Uh, any discussion on that then? Same as municipal uh, affairs and housing. That's informational. And then we move on to 8E, Thunder Bay District Social Services Administration Board. Again, that's uh, information. It's the board newsletter. Any questions or comments on that? Uh, item F, Ontario Clean Air Alliance. So, this one I think was looking for uh, possible action, but I think it, I don't think it was specifically directed at council. It was just what can you do? Um, yeah. And uh, so it's not addressed to us and directly, it's just a general information. And basically it's a uh, nuclear waste storage at the Darlington nuclear station. Okay, any comments about that? Okay. Um, Thunder Bay District Municipal League 2023 conference. So I'm on that. Uh, I'm on the Municipal League. I'm the Nipigon representative. So I will be going to that one that's just in Thunder Bay. Uh, early bird registration, February 1st. And that is happening March 23rd and 24th. If anyone is interested in that. Um, I was just going to ask Councillor Zecker, you, have you gone to that in the past? No, I haven't. Yeah, I, mean, um, I, I have, and I, I found it pretty good. So, uh, and, and it's a it's a close one. Um, so the expense wouldn't be that great, but I uh, I would encourage yeah. um, persons that can. It's all, it's just a Thunder Bay, mm -hmm. and it gives you a chance to um, to network with some of the other municipalities and and people that work there. So yeah, so we do that through Kelly or. Or Linda? Linda? Yeah, okay. Okay. I um, mean, um, Association of Ontario Municipalities Watch File. Again, this is for informational purposes. It is a newsletter um, from uh, AMO. Any comments on that? Okay. Any other business? Um, I'll go to staff to see if uh, Linda has anything to <coughs> to add or to say before we comment on our own stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I don't believe so. It's just been a very busy time, so, <laughs> yeah. so we're running trying to and stay on top. But yeah. Councillor okay. um, Sakamoto. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I just uh, without mentioning any names or anything, uh, just the um, ongoing pursuit of a of a new uh, public works uh, superintendent is is ongoing. I've been part of the interview process along with uh, Lyndon Kelly, and I just like to say that it's been going very well. Um, I'm, I'm very happy with uh, how that's been uh, handled, and it's been done in a very professional way. And we've had a number of uh, excellent candidates too. So I'm in the, in the bottom line is I'm I'm sure we will be uh, I'm hoping to be successful in, in selecting someone. And um, I think we're targeting a CAO before the end of the uh, month. I don't feel comfortable commenting on. Oh, this. okay. So anyhow, yeah. So we're hoping to have it have someone in place. Uh, the only one thing I was, uh, I know if, if anybody watched news, there was a, a thing that announced there about a month ago about how they took $158 million out of roads money from Northern Ontario and transferred it to Toronto. Well, I followed up with a friend of mine from MPO and he assured me that that was done, and but it will not affect the twinning between Thunder Bay and Nipigon, that they will be coming out with another phase coming out by spring to announce another part of the development of the road. So it really, irritated me when like nobody knows about it and basically they just take that much money out of northern ontario and give it to southern ontario well. councillor zeichner uh no i just like to give a shout out to the public works group uh that uh, gave up their christmas eve their christmas day boxing days mm -hmm. to keep our tongue clear over this uh massive blizzard we had <laughs> it was a uh, pretty terrible out there you know what i was out on christmas day and you're able to get around and there's a lot of community that weren't. So to see them, thank you. I'd agree with you there. I had that noted as well. Um, I think uh, someone went down Green Mantle three times on one of the days just to try to keep up with the drifts. The drifts are incredible uh, up around Wadsworth there. And they did a really good job. And like John said, they, they had to come in on their holidays, which was very, very appreciated for us to be able to get around. Um, I'd like to acknowledge, um, the, I don't know if it was the Legion or, or some ladies that used the Legion that opened the Legion up. Uh, there was the one day where the highway was closed and they opened the Legion up for anyone who was stranded and they had some coffee oh, yes. and tea going. And um, I was trying to find out the name of uh, the names of people who were, who were doing that, but I, I wasn't able to, but I just want to thank those people. And um, I think that maybe moving forward, we could look at having some kind of a, a plan for something like that. If, if there's mm -hmm. people that are stranded, then they often are yeah. uh, right here at Nipigon. Um, we can look at, at, at something, but um, uh, the red fund is coming up, um, the Rural Economic Development Fund. I think it's opening January the 23rd. Um, so hoping that staff and, and council can maybe be thinking of, of looking at that um, application and the eligible projects, eligible expenses, and try to try to think of some projects to uh, to apply for through that. Um, they, that is a that application is very detailed and competitive, so it's not something that can be done in a couple of days. So it's something you would really want to think about and prepare for. Um, did you have something else to say? Yeah, I just wanted to add something about the Legion. There, remember when the, the when the bridge fell up. Um, the Legion was actually opened upstairs and there was a, a youth group that actually had to stay there. So yeah, I think that's a very, that's a good idea to have some kind of a, um, arrangement with, uh, with some of the local service industries or, you know, organizations to maybe help out in, in, in an emergency. Yeah. Um, one more thing, I'm just trying to remember way back when. <laughs> one more thing, yeah. okay. Um, the, the food bank. So um, I, I came into contact with um, <laughs> Hats, who runs the, the Baptist Church Food Bank, and he said that this was way before Christmas, I'm trying to remember back, but he said that uh, the town had been wonderfully generous. There had been, he was shocked by how generous the community had been over the Christmas holidays. So, and I'm sure that was the same for the Nipigon Food Bank. So I just want to thank everybody out there who supported the food bank this year. One more? Yeah, just don't think, I know when I talked to the guy from MPO, they said they're going to be looking up now again shortly, not shortly, in the next while. Uh, how are they going to affect Nipping? And I guess Kelly, you'll be involved in those talks. No idea. With MPO, no. Who no idea. I don't. They don't. Who they get in touch with them? That's. I was just wondering who they get in touch with down this way. Could be council during a, a meeting. Uh, could be 
it, it, there'll be some type of communication. I haven't received. I wasn't prepared for this on the agenda, so I. Oh no, I just I'm just wondering. I just it, it, it depends most of the time. It's when they have meetings okay. with elected uh, okay. elected officials. That's how we've been receiving information. Just the prior council just received an update that that possibly the Nibby and um, I'm just going off the top of my head, like I said, I'm not prepared for this, um, yeah, no. is that the Nibby and phase would be possibly the last phase of yeah. the funding. So that was basically what was said today, but they still have that alternate route as the main issue on the table. That, yeah, I'm talking sure. to Okay. Yeah. And if I get anything as the mayor, I'll make sure yeah. it's normal that I would just send it off to everybody and put it on the, on the agenda. Okay, so um, uh, resolution number 12, 2023, uh, moved by Catherine, uh, Councillor Sakamoto, seconded by Councillor Zeckner, that this council do now convene to an in-camera session to discuss potential land player sales and employment matters. All in favor? Thank you so much, everybody. Okay. Same. Just close the doors. <laughs> <laughs> this is I'm getting on. Yes, I have the door open a little bit. Yeah, yeah and I have the window open. That helps you. But oh, before yeah. and in the past, the uh, arena has also served as a place for people yeah. that finally had yeah. the bad bicycle accident. Those people were killed. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. 